Hey, what's up? Happy Friday. I'm Christy with AppSumo. I am so happy that you are joining us today because also joining us is Dana Malstaff. Dana, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to chat with everybody today. Yay. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Dana, she's kind of a big deal. She's the founder and CEO of Boss Mom, a podcaster and author of a new book, Climb Your Own Ladder, which we are actually giving away as part of our prize package in a giveaway that I'll announce at the end of this webinar. Dana, I forgot to tell you that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, exactly. And so uh, we're really happy to have Dana here. She has been speaking at Social Media Marketing World this week, uh, and we ripped her away from that just to be here for you guys. Um, and I was telling Dana before, like not to put any pressure, but this is by far the most popular webinar that we've ever done. We have over 1300 registrants today. So guys, it's Facebook Friday. It's going to be a party. Uh, so you're in the right place if you want to learn about Facebook groups. So um, right now, let me tell you a little bit about how this webinar is going to go. In a little bit, I'm going to start asking Dana some questions about how to run a Facebook group, um, the benefits of the business, all of that good stuff, all the stuff that you came uh, here to learn. And then we'll do that for about 25, 30 minutes. And then at the end, we'll start taking your questions and Dana will answer them live. If you can't stay until the end, that's okay because I'll be sending out a replay of this webinar later today for all of you who registered. And um, you can go ahead and put your comments, your questions in the chat box at any time. At the end, I'm just gonna kind of scroll through and pick some of them. Hopefully we'll get to all of them, but with 1300 people on, I don't know, we might not get to all of them. <laughs> but the good news is Dana will tell you where you can get a hold of her after if you want to learn more. So let me uh, see, we got people. People are commenting. Marilyn Houston's in the house. Yes. Yeah, we so got Dana, England, Australia, just everywhere. It's yeah, we have a multinational uh, audience here at AppSumo, and they stay up all hours of the night just to watch our webinars. So <laughs> they are dedicated. All that. right, so let's see. Let me just make sure I've look at my notes, make sure I've got everything. Uh, I think I've told you about how this webinar is going to work. Let's get started. So Dana, I thought a good place to get started would be if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself, Boss Mom, what you do at Boss Mom for those who aren't as familiar. Yeah, absolutely. So Boss Mom is a place where we help moms uh, start businesses. Uh, the thing that, uh, that really is super important to, that's relevant to what we're talking about today is my business is based around building up community. My, the money I make in my business is based around building up community that serves my business. So we'll be able to talk today about how those two things can live together. Um, and what we've done with Boss Mom is we created a safe place where we could have supportive conversation and that went so well, we put a book out <laughs> about it, we've done podcasts about it, uh, we've grown an entire international brand around it, around an idea that was important to me that made me feel like I was less crazy as a mom and an entrepreneur, <laughs> right? I found a collective amount of women who also felt the same way I felt. And then we created a community around that. And what we did is that's, that's the reason I speak at social media marketing world. And the reason, you know, we're here today is we've created a systematic way to actually nurture community like you would a physical community that you're in only on Facebook and in that space, which makes all of the difference between you living in your group and being exhausted or between the group being a sustainable ecosystem that helps you grow your business and also makes you feel fulfilled as a person afterwards. So that's really what Boss Mom is about is raising each other up. Awesome. And I'm going to touch on part of that, um, having a community having a community that can sometimes be draining versus helpful to you. So I'm glad you mentioned that. So um, I've been in your community for a really long time. And I was remembering uh, earlier that I remember – I remember back when you had like just hit 3000 members in your group, right? And so now for, for perspective, she's at 36,000, right? So this was not too long ago. And I remember you used to do dance parties at every thousand. Do you remember this? Oh, so we used to do dance parties at every hundred. Oh, every then we hundred. Had to go every thousand. Then yeah. we had to move every 5,000 and we get a thousand people a month into yeah. the group. Now we've had to move it to every 10,000. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of dance parties. <laughs> go to <laughs> when have. your community is growing so much. All right. So, uh, again, I'm not sure how many of you guys um, are familiar with a Facebook page versus a Facebook group. And I don't want to get too elementary if you already know that. So, in the comments, let us know, like, yes, Christy, we already know what a Facebook group is. Just get on with it um, because I, there could be a small amount of people who are like I don't know the difference between a page and a group all right Shannon is saying she loves the boss mom group so we already have you already have a fan here awesome okay let's see if we got some people tuning in 
I'm guessing that the majority of the people already know what a group is, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just, it just, to, just to make it as simple as possible, because I think even though people know what they both are, a lot yeah. of people tell me, where should my focus be? Mm-hmm. And I just tell people that a for no, most of the time, this is not always inclu- fully inclusive, but for the most of the time, your page is the place where you get to stream updates, you get to give, you are the head of what's happening. You're the center of that universe, mm-hmm. to be honest. The Facebook page is where you're the center of the universe. A Facebook group is where you're no longer the, the center of the universe. You are a facilitator of a group connecting. Gotcha. And so it's not just what's more functional in your business or what's more what's going to get you the most traction. It's what do you want to do? And you really want to have both. But for for businesses more and more where Facebook wants you to go more and more is they want you to connect with other people and help other people connect. And in a group, that's the best space to do that. Plus, it creates a safety because people have to be get get let in. There's a prestige yes. and a and a safetyness that happens there that you're welcoming them into your home. You're shutting the door and you're saying, now let's have a conversation together that the whole world doesn't have to hear. Awesome. So obviously, um, you know, you run a Facebook group and you have a huge community. Do you, uh, what types of businesses should be starting Facebook groups? Like, are there types of businesses where, you know what, maybe it's not a good fit? And are there types of businesses where you would say, absolutely, you need to start a Facebook group? Yeah, there's very few instances where you sh- where a Facebook group isn't going to be valuable. OK, so number one is if you if you have conversations that are so highly controversial that it's really difficult to have them in writing. Um, so, for instance, I was talking to a lawyer yesterday and he was saying, I can't run this Facebook group. I had to shut it down because I can't give legal advice. In right. right, And and it was becoming this huge liability. So there are certain instances where you might have a business where it becomes difficult to actually have written conversations. Right. But there are some some groups where you're talking about religion or politics. It can be really amazing and wild and blow up and be amazing. And we'll talk about how you create those uh, and sustain those as safe, safe places. Um, The big thing to remember about whether or not you should start a Facebook group or not in your business is where are you at in your business? Because what you're doing is creating a sort of community grassroots arm of your marketing plan, right? Which means that there's some time and effort that goes into creating the ecosystem. Now, once Boss Mom, the engine started running, it doesn't really need me, right? I I want to be in there because it's my community and I love it, but technically it runs and sustains itself on its own without me, right? So I've got the engine going. In the beginning, just like running a business, it takes more time to get the engine running. And we can talk about ways to make that go faster, right? But yeah, it, takes little, yeah, it takes a little time to get the engine running, which means you'll have to spend more time there. So if you haven't built your business, if you don't know what you're selling, if you don't know what you're, you know, what you're gonna be doing and you're spending all your time figuring those things out, it's gonna be exhausting to have a Facebook group. So you just wanna make sure that timing is right for you. So you have a little bit of time to be social and then, and then it's going to be work wonders for you. But very few instances where I think a Facebook group isn't a valuable part of your yes. community. I totally agree. So you're saying that, you know, at least have your business started, know what your services are, know what your products are, and then start building a community. Like don't buy your domain name and start a Facebook group on the same day, essentially is what you're saying. Yeah. The only, <laughs> the only alternative to that is if you're like, Dana, I don't know what I want to sell. I just know that I want, I, there's this one thing that I care about. And you're more interested in starting a movement, yeah. Then you can absolutely have a group based around a movement, right? Okay. So um, we've developed a lot more products since Boss Mom has been born. I, I did consulting f- first, right, as I was starting the group. But the premise of the group had a movement behind it. There was a purpose behind it. I was very clear on the kind of person that would come into the group and what I wanted them to get out of the group. And those two things you have to be very clear on for mm-hmm. it to work. So how do you communicate that? How do you communicate like this is the type of people I want in this group and here's, you know, here are our goals and our priorities for the group. Okay, so when from within the group, when you're when you're in the group, you're going to set rules. So Facebook is adding more and more. Uh, Facebook is adding more and more ways for you to communicate what the rules are, right? So when they come into the, the title of your group, you have to think of the title of your group almost as SEO and keyword research, right? Don't be snazzy with the name of your group. You want to be functional. What are people going to search for so that they know what you are, right? 
Then you're going to tell them in the description, which is anybody before they even join it, they can see who you're looking for and what you care about. The basic rules go in this description. They don't have to join the group to see the description. When they come in, you're going to give them the four or five things, and Facebook walks you through this process. You're going to give them the four or five things that they can and can't do in this group, right, And which are the rules. And you're going to ask them three questions. And usually we say the third question should be asking them for their email because just in case Facebook goes away at some point, right, you have them in your in an alternate space. You need to and then when they come list. in, yes. And then when they <laughs> come in, they should have a pinned post that they see where you reiterate what it is they're supposed to get out of the group and what you're looking for with a video of you being warm and welcoming and not just telling them what they can't do, but telling them what they should do and giving them a small action plan of how to get started. And that's a good way to set up. And it can take you under an hour to set all of this up um, and, and get it going. Awesome. That's great advice. So um, I'm sure there are many, but what would you say are the biggest benefits of running a Facebook group? Can you hear me? Am I frozen? I might be frozen. Can you guys see oh, me? No, Am I frozen? You froze for a second. Okay. Am I still frozen? Can you hear me now? Freezing's not allowed. I can. You can hear me? I can, yeah. Okay, great. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Okay, everyone can see me and hear me. Okay, great. Um, so uh, uh, let me just s set the question up again. Um, I'm sure there are many benefits, but what would you say are the biggest benefits of running a Facebook group? Hi, are you still there? I'm still here. Did okay. it, kick me out? <laughs> it did kick you out. Now I see three, uh, three cameras on the screen. It kicked you out, but you're back now. I don't even know how, the, I don't know who the third of me is. Oh my goodness. I've never seen such a thing happen. Although, you know, it, it's a crazy month for tech. It's so. technology, right? There's a full moon out. They're all together. So the webinar gods need to be with us today. Okay. Do you need me to repeat my, the question again? My alter ego. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> awesome. So um, we're just talking about know. what are the biggest benefits of running a Facebook group? Um, okay, so there's a couple things to really think about. You know, when you are running a business, just like I was saying, a, with a page, you feel like it's all, uh, yeah, Pam said Mer Mer Mercury and retrograde, totally. Um, when, when you are running a Facebook page, you feel like it's all you. Right. You're running the you're running the page. You're running your business. It's you're the head of it. You're responsible for everything. It can be very exhausting. Right. Well, influencers. So think about all the big influencers that you follow their podcasts or you read your, their books or those kinds of things. Right. Those people um, are leveraging their audience. Right. So other pe they're leveraging people telling each other about them, saying, oh, I heard this and I loved it. Oh, I did this and I loved it. Oh, I'm in the Boss Moms group and I love it. And let me tell you about it. Have you joined that yet? Right. So the biggest benefit when you get a um, when you get a, a Facebook group that actually starts to work in the right way is that you don't have to be the one that spreads the word. Everybody else starts spreading the word and not just externally, but internally. So when someone says, hey, I'm really having the, the trajectory of my business. I'm really having a hard time figuring out the content strategy that's going to drive sales for me. I don't have to go in and say, oh, go talk to me. Somebody else says you need Dana, right? And then as to that, this thing, I go, oh, go over here. And others say, where can the men root of mouth starts to perpetuate within the group and it benefits you because instead of me telling people I'm awesome, other people are telling other people that I'm awesome. <laughs> and so it helps my business and then it also helps their businesses and their lives. So people see me as someone who impacts, positively impacts, and that creates for me and what I sell. So it becomes easier for me to sell what I do in my business because I don't have to build that trust somewhere else. Awesome. So for example, like let's say someone has more like a product based business, like a physical product. Maybe they sell t-shirts or something, right? Mm -hmm. How could they use a Facebook group to, I guess, sell more t-shirts? Like, or is it about creating a movement around those t-shirts and about what the t-shirts stand for? Or is it, it like, is there ever a case where like a Facebook group is really great for like direct sales? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So there's a couple ways to approach this and it depends on how, uh, your business, but I will say 
that Facebook and all the developments they're, they're doing are going to move you more and more toward movements that are about something where we're connecting that have that that sense about them right so so the idea of creating a group where everybody just sells something or where you just get to sell to everybody in there is going to be harder and harder to do because you need to create the engagement otherwise facebook at some point will just start saying you can't you won't be able to do that right so i think the smarter way is to build a community build a movement around it now there's a couple ways you can do it no matter what your business is but if we were talking about product-based businesses um, and you sell shirts right then what you want to think about is why do people wear shirts? What is it that I'm trying to actually get people excited about? Why did I start a business about making shirts, right? So maybe mm -hmm. you made shirts because you love brand, you know, the branding that you could put on a shirt and you want people to be able to brand themselves, right? So when we're thinking about what's that movement, what's the identity behind it, you may be starting a Facebook group all about you know, how are we creating more identity for us? How are we wearing our identity, right? And, and those kinds of things. So that you're starting conversations that lead people to want to buy shirts, right? So what right. we want to do is create spaces that facilitate the kind of conversation that lead people to buy things. So if you don't know how to sell somebody and outside of just saying, do you want a shirt? If you don't know how to convince somebody that they need a shirt that mm -hmm. has something on it, then it's going to be hard to create a group that gets people to think that they need shirts, right? So what you that's what you wanted. Now, the other thing too is there are times when people will start a community of just something that they love and it and then they tell everybody, by the way, now that you've fallen in love with me, um, I also have this business, right? So not everybody in my group needs me and that's okay. And I, because it's an ecosystem, right? So if you're a plumber and you're in a city, Right. They understand that not everybody owns a house. They understand that not everybody's going to need them and not everybody's going to need them at the same time, but they still want to be known in the neighborhood so that when somebody does need them, they're the known person. Right. So in a lot of ways, these communities, you have to understand there is a subset of the community that is your true ideal client. And then the rest of the community is you need different levels at different places so that they facilitate each other. Um, and so so then you're really thinking about what what's the first conversations that I want to have? What's the topic of the conversations I want to have that will lead people to believe they need what I have? And that's how you start to understand what kind of group you're going to you're going to create. Awesome. And the re the only reason I brought that up is because, I you know, there may be people on here who are like, I just want to get more sales and I'm going to open a group because I want more sales. But it's it's so much more than that. It is, in fact, building a community around your product or your services or a movement um, and that. Yeah indirectly leads to more sale, more sales. Well, and sales is exhausting, yeah. by the way. I mean, everybody says that. Nobody likes to sell. Nobody wants to get on the phone or do a direct message or make Facebook ads where you feel like you're just trying to get people to buy, 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 right? Mm -hmm. It's exhausting. What you have to do is you have to create a system, right, that pushes people the way you want to push them. And what people think about is they think sales funnels or the ads or my email list is the way that I'm going to push people through a process. But a community is still a system, a community okay. where people systematically come in and have conversations that you help facilitate is a space, like think about when you go to a church or when you go to a school or when you go to any of those things, those are still communities where they facilitate a certain kind of conversations. When you go to your local meetups, right? And the coffee shops and moms meet up, it's facilitating a conversation. That is a system that if you do it right, will always output sales for you. Awesome. Oh, you guys should write that down. That was really good. <laughs> that was really, but, or maybe you don't have to because I'm sending out a replay later today, but that was really good, Dana. Um, so you talked about using your group uh, almost like a think tank. So what are some of the, you know, maybe the new products that came out of there or what kind of ideas are you getting from them? Um, and how do you prompt those discussions to get that feedback? Oh, I'm so glad you asked this question because this is really the key to how to create a community because this is what everybody does. They're like, Dana, everything you just said sounds amazing. I want a community. I have no idea how to build it. And I have a group and nobody, nobody does anything there, right? So how do you actually create engagement? And your question answers that question, which is we create community by asking it good questions, right? That's, that's what you would, I was, went to journalism school. I wanted to be a news anchor way back in the day. And that we learned good questions create good answers, right? So one of the things that you do within your community is you say, well, what decisions do I need to make in my business, right? So if you're going to write a book, I need to 
uh, think of the title. I need to decide on the cover. I need to decide on the picture of me on the back. I need to decide how many chapters there are going to be or what the sections are going to be. I need to decide five quotes that I'm going to put in there, right? If you have a podcast, same cover, title, you know, what are the categories? What are the, all those things? Um, if, whether it's a product you're putting out, we just um, had something that we were launching and we needed to make postcards, right? So it's like what picture is going to go on the postcard and what answers or questions do we need to answer? Those are all decisions you have to make in your business, which is a really stressful part about running a business. So when you go into a, uh, when you go into a, in your group, when you start asking those questions, when you start asking people to help you make decisions, they want to engage because it makes them feel valued. Their opinion is valued. So now you start getting engagement. Now Facebook starts showing you to more people, more of what you say goes to people, more of your group gets recommended. 80% of the women that come into our group every month, a thousand people, so 80% of 8,800 women get recommended to us by Facebook for free. Oh, wow. because we're so engaged. And a lot of that is, I was just showing this in Social Media Marketing World. I did the post where I said, hey guys, here's four pictures of me. I'm going for professional but fun. We've got to put this on a postcard we're going to be sending out. Which one do you like? Over 310 comments. Oh, because all they had to do is put one or four or three or two. And then a couple people, you know, our super engagers put some extra <laughs> content and told us some extra things, right? But I did two things. One, I created a massive amount of engagement. I did three things actually. I created a massive amount of engagement. Two, I created a, um, the like algorithm boost where Facebook now thinks I'm super engaging. So the next thing I put out, more people are going to see it. And three, I told them I'm putting something out and you're going to get something in the mail if you buy it. Help me pick out the front picture. So now mm -hmm. I have, I have put a primer out and buzz, but just a hint of it, right? There's a little discretion there. There's a little a teaser. Little a little bit, right so that yeah. when we actually start to market the thing and tell people about it instead of it feeling like i'm running this community and then out of left field i want people to buy something they've actually helped me make decisions about it so it doesn't feel weird it feels completely natural to then sell stuff in my group absolutely so 310 comments is a lot right but what happens if you have a very small group so let's say you have 50 or 100 people because you're just starting, is the engagement strategy still the same? And how do you um, how do you avoid the group from being like crickets where you know not a lot of people or not a lot of chatter is going on? Yeah, so there um, there's four kinds of posts that you should do. So what pe most people do is they go and they create a group and then they create a bunch of prompts and then they post the prompts and then nobody says anything. Um, and so then they're the only one posting, right? right? So one of the first things I tell people is do not do prompts when you start your group. Um, which is counterintuitive to what most people say, right? Yes. So don't do prompts. Um, what you want to do is you want other people posting, not you, because Facebook knows you're the admin. And if you're mm -hmm. the only one posting, it's not going to consider it engaging. And if you're the only one posting, and even if people are commenting, it's still not going to do for you what you want because other people have to post. So what you do is there are uh, one in the video that you put up as your pin post, no matter how small your group is, you tell people how to post, right? And you tell them to do this. You tell them, I want your questions. I want your challenges. And here's a, two good ways to do it. One, things you need people to help you make decisions on and things you want people's opinion on, right? In our group, it's like, hey, if you're having a hard time with potty training or you're having doing any of those things, ask for support in what those are, right? Um, and or, you know, hey, if you need a decision because you're putting something out into the world, ask that decision. Use this as a focus group. So you're telling people exactly things they can post yeah. and then prompting them to post because if the more people post, the better. The four kinds of posts you want to do. And yeah, I totally, Mark, I said, don't do prompts. That was <laughs> you're going to later, but not yeah. in the beginning because it, it doesn't help you in the beginning for you to be the only one posting. So you're going to do four kinds of posts. Um, that'll get a lot of traction and then people will see that you're doing it and they will start mimicking you. So what people do is they do prompts, but people can't mimic your prompts. So you're not helping them understand how to engage in the group. And that's really important. You have to mirror what you want people to do. So number one is having them help you make decisions like we talked about, right? Number two is, um, and by the way, don't ever use the polls because polls don't help you either because people Ooh. don't comment on polls. They answer the poll and it doesn't help with engagement. Facebook doesn't count that, right? It's a pro tip okay. right there. Pro yes. tip. Yeah. So don't use the polls. It's much better to take a picture, you know, either in words and give them number options. So all they have to do is say what the number is or the letter is. 
um, you'll get way more engagement that way. Number two is opinions, right? So if you're going to launch a podcast, ask them which podcast they listen to. Um, you know, ask them what their favorite podcaster is, like at those kinds of things. You're asking their opinion, right? If you're a group for moms and you're going to ask, um, ask people, ask questions that you're having, like potty training and those kinds of things. So those are the two. Um, the third one is call to arms posts, right? Um, call to arms posts are where you're asking them to rally, right? So here's a good example of what I used for, I was on social media examiner podcast or social media marketing podcast, right? And the, and there was a post on the social media examiner page. So instead of just posting into my group and saying, Hey, go watch or listen to this. I went in and I said, this was on my bucket list. Ladies, I have been waiting a year and a half to get on this podcast. And my dream has finally come true. <laughs> like, please, put a celebration gift below because I am freaking going to pop some champagne. And like, this is one of my, happy <laughs> ones, right. Instead of it being about going and listening to me, I made it about celebrating me achieving something. So mm -hmm. we call those call to arms posts because it's about rallying. It's about coming to the riot, right? So you can do it like that where we're celebrating. Um, you can do it where it's like, this is some injustice happened to me, or I wish the world were, was like this, or like, you know, ladies, I am sitting here and I have, uh, you know, th this jacket on, but I've got yoga pants on. I haven't showered in three days. I've been spit up five times and I, and I just need somebody to tell me that I am not a dumb person that I can't cry out my intelligence because I want to weep right now. It's a call to arms because everybody who's ever felt that way is going to come in and say, I feel that way. Let me connect with you. Let me give you words of wisdom. So you've got to do call to arms posts because it gets people to rally behind what you care about and they want to engage with you so much. And then the fourth one is they can't help themselves. And those are ones where it's like, hey, guys, uh, I'm about to do an event. And do I do purple couches or pink couches? Hey, guys, I'm about to, you know, do an intro to a podcast. Do I use JT or Jay-Z? Right. Like, oh, hey, guys. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Like, I'm about to like I've had somebody post. They're like, which one are you? And it was zero inbox or like 13,000. Wow. Right. And yeah. everybody has an opinion. Are you a cat and dog person? Right. I did um, one account. Help yourself. One also will do like gifts is a great one. So I'm like, hey, my kids are sleeping in the back. And I'm trying to figure out, and I was legitimately doing this, like I'm trying to write, figure out some email stuff while the kids are napping. So I'm going to, I, but I can't find the right gift that says like, oh, did that just happen? Right. And so right. I was like, share me some gifts. And it was, it was uh, 128 comments within an hour. Oh my people, goodness. Because people freaking love. They love gifts. <laughs> they, they do love, love gifts. gifts. They love to have an opinion. And I love to, and I love it. So those four things, if you didn't do any prompts for the first six months of your group and you just said those four things and showed as an example so other people started to naturally do those four things too, you have a massively engaged community. And then as soon as you start seeing everybody engaging, then you ask everybody to vote what they want the prompts to be. And that's when you start doing prompts. That is amazing. You guys, aren't you getting so much? There's the comments are so positive right now. People are saying your advice is so tangible. They're so happy they're here. So <laughs> thank you, Jenna. That was that was so brilliant. Now, um, because I'm in your group and, and you know, even just some of the pro the the topics that you just mentioned included a lot of your personality. Right. So yeah. what happens to those of us who may be introverted and are like, oh, I don't know if I can put it all out there. Like, can we still run a group with that much fervor if we're not like if we're kind of like shy a little bit? Yeah. So, OK, so there's a couple things. I mean, one one is that don't stop being you. Right. Uh, everybody has idiosyncrasies and and everybody has, you know, there's the quiet, there's the louder, there's the funny. There's I had a friend once. She's like, Dan, I wish I could just make people laugh like you do. <laughs> right. everybody, you like, I'm really inspirational. So people always cry. And I was like, why is that a bad thing? Like, I wish I could make people cry. <laughs> every day. Like, it's just this is not my forte. And so what you want to think about is what what aspects of you are people going to latch on to and then lean into those. Right. If you're shy. Tell people that. So one of the things I, I always tell people, we call it the elephant in the room, right? So the elephant in the room is just the metaphor that there's something in the, that we're not talking about and it's making it hard to have a conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what I tell people, whether you're selling or in a group or anywhere, is call the elephant out in a room. So if you are an introvert or you're shy or you're nervous about something or you don't feel comfortable with something, tell people. Tell them in the welcome video. Right. right. Tell them, say, look, I started this group. I'm really passionate about it. Sometimes it's hard to tell I'm passionate because I'm kind of shy. But I'll tell you, I'll just pull my ear if I'm really passionate about something. And that'll be our thing. 
to okay. know, right? So what you do is you start telling people uh, what you are worried that they're not going to like about you or not going to be attracted to you. And, and it starts to have people go, oh my gosh, I'm the same way. Oh right. my goodness, I totally understand. And now when they see you, when you started worrying about whether or not you weren't extrovert enough or you weren't loud enough or you weren't fast enough or whatever it is, you stop feeling like you're going to be judged for that because you've already told people this is who you are. So I'll tell people I make weird relationship sexual references because I, I think we've all dated people. And so it's easier to understand business if you understand it in the context of a relationship. So I make a lot of relationship metaphors. I love to dance. I talk really fast. I'm one of the only people that people tell me they have to slow me down. On <laughs> podcast. Everybody, everybody's too acting <laughs> and they're like, Dana, we have you. And I'm like, I can't, I've tried to act slower and I'm not as smart when I talk <laughs> slow. Right. And I'm like, so these are the weird things about me that, that I, that I want people to know. I know about them. And so just start calling the elephant out in the room. This also works really good outside of your group, just in your general businesses or anywhere on social media, right? Because the things that we get caught up in that keep us from taking action, from getting, from being in those Facebook groups, right? And from growing our business is we think people are judging us for things that they probably aren't even judging us for, right? I had a girl that once told me, um, hey, I somebody told me I act like a salesperson, like I feel like a used salesperson. So now I'm scared to sell. And I said, every time you talk to somebody, in this sales situation from now on, I want you to say, so one time told me, I sound like a used salesman and I am really passionate, almost overly big do because I love it and I, I do it because that's just who I am. So let's just, just touch your nose if I'm like overwhelming you with like with my excitement and I'll know to, to tone it down and it'll be our little <laughs> secret, right? And I was like, if you do that and you pr even practice in the mirror saying that, then every time you engage with somebody, you've not only created an inside joke, you created a connection. Absolutely. And now you guys are going to laugh about it and you don't have to worry about it. It's the same thing in groups. Anything that you're worried about, someone's not going to engage with you for some reason in your pinned video, let it out and tell them about it. And, it, and, it, and then it creates that intimacy that is what actually makes groups grow. Absolutely, it makes you much more relatable, right? Like you said, if someone can look at you and say, oh, I feel that same way too, or I do that same thing too, it feels like I have a brand new best friend because she gets me or he gets me. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and I want to get, there's like some in the comments are saying we're freezing. So hopefully, I, we, I hope, hopefully we can get through the rest of this. Um, it's fine on my end. Dan, I hope it's fine on your end too. No, I'm Guys, yeah. yeah, I apologize. I hope, um, I hope that you're catching most of this, but we will be sending out the replay later today as well. Um, and again, I want to get to your questions. I want to get to the audience questions, but we have to talk about how to grow a Facebook group because I think that's, you know, one of the, that's a $64,000 question, right? So it's like, okay, we know the value of it. We know we want to start it. How do we grow that to become a you know, 36,000 member group? Yeah. Well, okay. So one of the easiest ways, in my opinion, to actually grow your Facebook group, your influence or anything like that. Um, one of the number one things I tell people is go get interviewed on podcasts, right? Ooh, yeah. Which is like, oh wait, yeah. Danny, you just took us out of Facebook <laughs> completely. But the fact is, is that people join groups with people they like and trust. And there is no better way. Uh, there's over half a million podcasts right now that are okay. out there. Wow. And that is continually growing. It's actually more than half a million, right? Um, and they are continuing to grow. Those people need guests, right? Yeah. It needs you, they need guests. So if you can go out and tell people I want to be on your show, pick the small ones first, right? Just don't pick the big ones, pick small podcasts to just go and t say, I want to tell you my story, right? Um, t and be an honest about what your story is, not what you sell, but what your story is because yeah. people want to have interesting conversations. Some people are going to say no. Some people are going to say yes. You start getting on podcasts and then you tell everybody under the sun on those podcasts about your group. If you have a really good opt in, right? You've got some, you're like, oh, growing my list isn't bad, but getting people into my Facebook group, make sure that you're systematically telling people about what's happening in your Facebook group. Pull a conversation every couple of weeks from a, you know, that you're having there and link it to the group to send people back. If Instagram is what's working for you, then go to Instagram and tell people, pull a conversation and send people over there so that they have to join in order to watch it, right? So one of the things is, get featured uh, one of the second and it's way easier than you think y'all if you're scared about <laughs> podcasts featured, are usually looking for guests yes yes it's way easier especially if you pick the ones that have under 25 reviews 
Um, those people are trying to build that up and, and a thousand or a hundred people that watch your episode over here are a hundred people potentially that are going to fall in love with you and come over there. Once you've done more, then you start building up, up that clout, right? Um, now the other thing that you can do, uh, if you're in Facebook is you can, uh, if you, if you want to actually like put a little money behind it. Um, is you can do a series on your page, whether you were on your page or not, right? So what you do is you go to your, your business page because you can't boost from a personal page, right? So you go to a, you go to your business page, you think up six topics that are really the call to arms ones. Like what do you care about and what do you want like people to care about, right? So we would talk about mom guilt in art. We would talk about trying to work from and have babies, right? We would have those kinds of conversations. So you pick six topics, you do six lives once a week, right? During the live, you tell everybody that these are the kinds of conversations we're having over in my Facebook group. If you click, you can Facebook group. Because you're leading them to Facebook, you're going to spend less to boost that and it's going to show it to more. You take that and for one week each, you, you can spend like 50 bucks each week and boost that um, to the audience that you think is generally, I'd say, target another kind of page or influencer that you think is going to work for you. And I think you guys had a Facebook ad one before. So, you know, uh, you don't have to do an ad. You just boost them every week for six weeks. The first couple of weeks, nobody's going to watch it and you're not going to get a lot of traction and you're going to be worried about it. But stick with it, because every time people start to connect and engage with that with that um, video, Facebook is going to think you're more engaging. It's going to show it to more people, right? So by the time you get to week three, all of a sudden you're getting a lot more engagement. More people are seeing it. More people are seeing it organically and you're off to the races. And then once you start getting people translated into your group, even in a small sense, you have a call to arms. You ask everybody to share out to get more people in the group so you can have conversations. And then you can repeat that loop as much as you want. Awesome. I love those strategies. And you know what? They're also very actionable. Right. So sometimes like, you know, we have influencers on who kind of give broad general advice. You have given tangible, actionable advice each and every time. So thank you so much for that. And I hope I'm not freezing, even though some of you are saying that I'm freezing. <laughs> but so you, can hear me. I haven't, you haven't froze at all for me. Yeah. So we st I'm sorry, guys, that it says freezing. Um, so let's wrap this up and we'll take some audience questions. But before we go, um, what are the top three things that you want people to leave here remembering or knowing about Facebook groups? Okay, one thing about Facebook group that you guys have to re recognize is, and, and I had mentioned this before we started recording that I had been talking about at Social Media Marketing World, which is we joined Facebook group originally, just in general, originally to connect with friends we already had, right? But we stayed on Facebook and we started getting into groups to connect with people we don't know, to find friends, right? So the problem with that is that, you know, we keep having this mentality that we're just going in and we're pushing stuff at Facebook, right? Oh, I got a post on Facebook. Oh, I've got a post in this group, right? But if you flipped it around and, and realize that what you're doing is finding your next best friend, if that was the, if you woke up every single yeah. morning and you said, I'm going to find my next best friend, who is that? Not only does it help you in your business because you want your ideal clients to be people you'd want to hang out with, right? Of course, yeah. You start going in and you start engaging in that way, right? So that's number one. Um, number two is when you're really thinking about Facebook groups, use those four posts that we talked about, right? To really engage in there. And then the third one is if you really want it to your Facebook group to work, make sure that you are promoting the super engagers in your group. Facebook just put out a new way where within the group, as you start um, having some people in there engaging, it'll pop up and tell you top performers and give you a button to oh, wow. engage with them, right? So go and tell people once a week, be like, oh my gosh, Mary is amazing. She's been engaging so much. Can we all give Mary a massive high five? If you don't know her, make sure you go follow her today. Right. Awesome. You can say, hey, everybody, I'm not the only Facebook group here. Who else has Facebook groups and tell us what it is so we can all be a part of everybody's community. Right. So don't try and just be yourself in there. Do the engaging posts and then actually celebrate the people in there. And it's going to be amazing. Awesome. That is great advice. All right. So, guys, we're going to we're going to take your questions now. Um, and one of the questions that I saw come through is um, the type of group. So you can have a public, a private or a secret group. What would you recommend? Um, so you can have, I do the private or the closed group, right? Okay. So the, um, basically what that means is people have to give permission to get in there. 
So you like you have to say yes when someone says, and then they've got to answer your three questions. They give you three questions that people can answer. Um, that is the best one. If it is an open one, then you have no control, right? Which means that anybody can join. You can't. You can't. You know. You can't really make sure that you're monitoring. And one of the biggest things you have to remember about a Facebook group is it's. I said in the very beginning, they want to be valued, and they want to feel safe. You can't create safety with open doors right? There has to be some kind of triage. So, and if it's secret, the only way I've ever found secret to be actually beneficial is if you have a high paid program and you're letting people in. And even then, I, I think it's not as useful because nobody can even see that it exists. And you have to be friends with the person in order for them to get in. So it logistically becomes a pain for those people to get into the group. What I would recommend is you have your, like your closed secret group, right? or private group, sorry, your closed private group, people have to ask to come in, right? And then you have a triage process so you know who you're letting in. For us, we just, we actually go to the other page. It takes two seconds. We click on their profile, look on their profile, and we make sure that they're a human being that posts human being stuff. Mm -hmm. So if the only thing they have in their feed is images and reposts, we don't let them in the group because if they're not willing to even be here themselves, over there a little bit in their personal profile, then they're not gonna be that way in the group. So that's one of our key indicators for us, right? Um, so we're going over, we're, we're triaging. Here's the cool thing. If you guys have paid groups where somebody bought a program for you and you're giving them a Facebook group, because that's a, a way that you can do that. We have our, you should have one group that's open to the public that you, you know, triage people coming in. And then if you have paid programs, you can have Facebook groups to those. And anybody who asks to join that, uh, that private group, that isn't in your program, you then direct message them and say, hey, you actually have to be in my program to do this. Would you like to learn about my program? And it creates an open opportunity for you to talk to more people about what it is that you're doing. Absolutely, and I'm glad you ended with that because that was the next question. Someone asked, you know, paid versus free groups. Um, is the engagement strategy the same for those? Is growing it the same for, well, I guess, with paid groups, you would, they'd have to be part of, they'd have to buy into it. But in terms of like engaging those paid groups, um, is it the same strategy? Yeah. So with the paid group prompts are going to be more, uh, more usable, right? So, um, but you don't do them every day. So if somebody paid to be in a course or a group program or something like that for you, right? Um, the, some kind of membership that they're in, then you're going to do, usually I say like three prompts a week and you're prompting action because if they've paid to do something, then what they want is results. They're paying for some kind of results. So you create prompts that help facilitate the result, right? So maybe Mondays are going to be when you're actually saying, what's everybody going to do this week? Wednesdays, the check-in or where people celebrate what's working or what's not working. And Friday is sort of a finish strong Friday, where it's when, what's one thing we can do today to make sure that we can enjoy the weekend, right? So think about what result you want to get people and what prompts you could do because people will engage in there because they've paid you to do prompts. So you can set up and you can reschedule those organic or uh, directly in Facebook. Um, so the less you push from an outside source into Facebook, Facebook likes to stay within Facebook. Mm -hmm. Then you can schedule out like a month in advance. So just start scheduling it in into Facebook and it's going to work so much better for you. But then the other thing still applies in a paid group, which is those kinds of posts where you ask questions and things like that. And it's just in a more intimate space where you're maybe divulging more, maybe going live more, depending on how much they've paid. But the, but the normal people that will just rise up and be stars, let them. So people that paid to be in your program and are doing really well and getting amazing results, ask those people to be ambassadors and leaders, community leaders in that paid group, awesome. they will do it because you've helped them get results. They get to be a shiny example that the results that you promise people are actually true, right? And then they start to connect and they'll actually run the group for you. It, it works beautifully. Yeah, that's amazing. And so we have a question about the newsfeed. The, is the newsfeed dead? And can groups overcome the newsfeed? You mean the news feed just in, from the sense of what people like Facebook, would like get yeah. on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's harder to be seen. I think more, way more than the news feed, people are looking at their notifications, yeah. right? So, so you do get people that are scrolling, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't get excited about whether or not you're going to be visible there. You're more likely you want to get in their notifications. And the four kind of prompts that I, or four kind of posts that I talked about, means that more people will see you, so you'll get in their notifications. So what happens is, if you do a post, and then other people who've been engaged with you over the last week, 
those people will get notified that they've seen your post. So the more people that engage with one post, that means the next post, more people will see it. And the next post, more people will see it. So the more engaged you get, it solves the problem because they're not getting it in even, they may be getting it in their feed, but they may, you know, within 10 seconds, they're gonna lose that because they're getting so many things in there. They're right. gonna get it in their notifications. And that's where the magic happens. You wanna get in people's notifications because that's actually actively prompting them to engage. Now, there's one other thing that's really important about this. It is your job, it is your job to keep your posts alive. So a really good pro tip for this is when somebody, you, you put a post out and you know, you tell everybody something and they start commenting, right? They, you get five comments. Now what we tend to do is we go in and we like and comment on each of those comments, right? I don't want you to do that. I want you to go in and like and comment one comment and then I want you to come back an hour or two later and put a post on like and comment on the second comment. Oh, wow. and a couple of, because every time you do that, it pushes you back up to the top. And if, if you have that trend of engagement over a certain period of time, then the algorithm in Facebook tags you as a trending post and it keeps you at the top for a certain period of time. So you want you keep it alive by not replying to everybody but going in periodically. So if there is a particular post that you really, really, really want, then you make sure that you are keeping it alive on your own. Awesome. I wish I had a pen so I could just be writing this stuff down. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be watching the replay on this for our own, uh, for AppSumo's own uh, benefits. So we had a question. It says, what is the tipping point you need to reach for engagement uh, for Facebook to start promoting your group to others? Oh, it's not a lot. That's what's, that's what's so interesting. It's not a lot. So um, if you have 50 people in your group, right? And there's only 50 people in your group, but you have, uh, and I don't know what the exact thing, you know, number it is, but yeah. you can get at least 30% of those people and you can see that in your insights, right? So there's a little insight button that'll show you how many people. If you can get, you know, 30% of the people in that group to be commenting back, like Facebook will start to notice you and, nice. and you don't, and it doesn't have to be over time. It's what's great about it is, is that you could have one week that's really engaging and it'll start to recommend you. And then that may die off and then it may build up and then, you know, so it kind of builds over time, but it doesn't have to be all that much. So if you use the four posts we talked about a little bit earlier, and actually could you, engagement. could you restay those four posts? Because someone asked in the comments, they'd like you to to yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. yeah. So the, the first one is they help you make decisions. So any decision you have to make in your business, you ask them, what cover should I use? Everybody voted on our covers. Everybody votes on our pictures, right? Everybody votes on, they'll vote, ask them about pricing, the, all those things. So anything you need to make a decision on, they do a decision, uh, do a decision post, right? Is what it's called. Okay. The second one is opinion posts. So you want people's opinions. What's your favorite podcast? What's your, uh, you know, which colors do you like for this? What outfit should I wear for this? Right? It doesn't have to be, uh, like super in depth in your business. It can be fun things like, Hey guys, I'm speaking at social media marketing world. Should I wear a blazer with pants or should I wear a skirt? And you show them a picture of each one and say one or two, right? What you're doing is you're priming it so people now know I'm speaking at Social Media Marketing World or doing a co-webinar with AppSumo, right? <laughs> but they don't, but you're not, you're not salesy about it. You're actually actually having them help you make a, you know, giving an opinion about something, right? And giving, making you make a decision. And a lot of times those two overlap and that's totally fine. Like don't beat yourself up if you've got one that fits all four categories, right? Of course. Um, call to arms is when you're getting them to rally, to get excited about what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. So if you know, you're trying to get your, you, you want to talk about mom guilt, a call to arms is like, Hey ladies, like this is that moment when you realize that you're an extrovert trying to raise an introvert, uh, you know, and you realize that, that your whole life is going to be an uphill battle. Right. <laughs> and then everybody who feels that way and connects with that is going to comment. Right. So the call to arms is getting people who believe what you believe just to say, I believe that too. It's a call to arms. And then the fourth one is that I just can't help myself, which is the super easy ones where it's like, I'm celebrating, do a GIF. Like I'm, you know, I'm over here. Tell me what, what you, you know, uh, basically some of the things are, are the opinion posts and the GIF one and are, are, can often overlap. So they just can't help myself are the ones where they literally can't help themselves. All they have to do is say yes or no, like give a one answer, um, you know, a letter answer where they're, oh, they're sharing a GIF where they're telling you something that happened to them. So where they can't help but share some ridiculous story about something. Okay. So those are the four posts. And what I will tell you, by the way, is everything in life is a 80, 20 rule, mm -hmm. which means if you go into business being totally okay with the fact that 80% of what you do is not going to 
go viral the way you want or engage the way you want or sell the way you want, then you're going to be way better off because what you do is you just go to the next thing. The really successful people are the people who see when the 20% is happening and leverage the 20% that actually works. So if 20% of your posts that you do using this tactic work like gangbusters, then you are doing great. Just keep <laughs> doing more of that. And the 20%, when you have a bigger audience, 20% is a lot bigger, yes, right? Sure. Just keep that in mind. Awesome. So we had a really great question about um, your niche, right? So how niche should you make this group? And let me let me say the whole question. It said, um, how niche do you make your groups? For example, right now I have a dog lovers group, but I wonder if it'd be better to have um, several groups that are more narrow, like dog training or feeding your dog. How niche should you go with your groups? Yeah, I would say that your group should shouldn't be so niche that that nobody that there isn't a a, a nice rounded conversation happening, right? Yeah. So I would say uh, you if you have a niche for you know for people who have dogs, or even technically like people who maybe have a certain kind of dog, then that niche is going to be big enough to grow that group in a really meaningful way, and then you can make sure you're facilitating conversation about the extra niche thing that you do, right? So my business is content strategy. Like I help women actually structure their businesses so that people move from free content to paid content. Like that's my area of expertise, but that's not who we let into the group. And to be honest, we even let some men, some fathers and some women who don't have kids, right? Because it's all about what kind of value are they going to give, not what necessarily demographic. So if you have a group and it's a niche about dogs and somebody comes in and says, I've always wanted to have a dog, you're going to let them in because they're going to add valuable conversation to it. You just kick people out. I kick a ton of moms out of our group that don't add value out value to the conversation. So just remember that you want it to be niche enough so that it people can identify themselves with the group, but big enough so that there's a variety of conversations that can happen. Great answer. Great answer. Uh, we had a lot of questions about how much time does all of this take and how can you streamline it? Okay, so number one is in the very beginning, it's gonna take more time than it will later, just like growing a business, right? Um, but there's a couple ways that you can streamline this really, really well. So um, I have a, a virtual assistant that's in the Philippines, and when I go to sleep at night, she spends maybe 30 minutes. So my virtual assistant, who is under $10 an hour, is for 30 minutes a night. It does not cost a lot, right, to have one of these. Um, she goes in. And she lets people into the group and she kicks people out of the group. So we've created wow. a standard operations, you know, document to know who to let in, who to kick out. So that's really, really helpful, right? She then does something that's really, really valuable for us, which is she goes in and she does searches on what how, places where I can add value. So content strategy, social media, business coaching, those kinds of things. And she sees who's posted. If she sees something that's relevant, she think I can add value to. She actually pulls that out into a, a little link. And when I wake up in the morning, I have a little list of links that I click without going into Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. I click on the link, it pops up the post. I can comment in the post and for 10 minutes a day, I can be engaged with my group without losing the day, right? Because I have to make sure I stay focused so I could run, run my business. So yeah. that's one of the ways that we have now since helped me stay engaged without losing myself in the space. If you set good rules in, in your group, then you can in less than an hour a day in the beginning and probably less than 30 minutes a day going forward, create a massively sustainable group because you don't have to be the only one posting. Everybody else is posting, right? Right. The reason you're in there 30 minutes a day is to make sure you're still seen as the leader and you're still connected, but it's not your job to be in that group. It's your job to create a group that doesn't need you. Gotcha. That's so counterintuitive too, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So we had some questions about time of the day to post. Are there certain times of the day that are better for groups? It really depends on your group. So in your insights, um, you can look at them on your phone. You can now look at them on your actual computer. So when you're in your group as an admin on the left, it'll say insights. And one of the things it shows you is over the last 28 days or the last seven days, you can kind of switch what you want. Um, what is the engagement? And it'll tell you what time of day and what day of week, right? So wow. you'll start to see trends. Now, one of the things that we notice is we have a lot of women in our groups that still have jobs or have side hustles or have kids. So our most popular times are going to be nap time, and bedtime right so we find noon and six are oddly right like and i think that's our time so i think that's nine east coast right so like the nighttime and lunchtime or nap time is going to be 
the most popular times for us. We find that Tuesday is an oddly popular time. <laughs> However, at different times of the year, that shifts. So every month, go into your insights and see what your trend is and leverage the trend and recognize that, that you're talking about a group of people. So nothing's going to stay the same, right? But it, the, but Facebook is really good about giving you insights on who your top contributors are and what the top conversations are, right? So go into your insights every week when you're starting out and say, wow, this one post about this one topic went really well. I'm going to ask more things and get more people to engage on this topic, right? Like maybe I'm going to do a six week series where we all talk about this topic because this one did so well. Wow. I'm really seeing that Thursdays is a day. I'm going to start doing my lives on Thursdays. So I know everybody wants to create a system, but create a system where you're assessing the system, right? Yeah, right? So that you can make tiny, tiny tweaks to leverage what's working for you. Based on data and not necessarily what you think you remember from the conversations, right? So that's the nice thing about insights is that you go in and you actually have hard data on what's going on in your groups. Yeah. Um, Jennifer had a great question and we can only take a few more questions, guys. I apologize because we're running out of time. But Jennifer had a great question and she said, what are some good rules to have in your group? Yeah, okay, so um, one of the big things that we do is we don't allow people to go live and we don't allow them to really stream anything in, right? So sharing in videos and those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, one is because I can't control what they're saying. Um, not that I control everything everybody says, but I can read a post pretty quickly and, and react and interact if something's appropriate or inappropriate. I can't do that with video. Um, and, and it's hard to not, you know, when people are promoting and things like that. So we don't let that. I'm the only one that can go live. And to be honest, I think as somebody who spends time to uh, start the group, it's your privilege to be the person that gets to go live. You can always bring other people in if you choose, right? So number one is I don't let people go live. Number two is I don't let them promote, right? So this is what I tell people is that you can't blatantly promote. So don't ask people to join your Facebook group. Don't ask people to buy your thing. Don't ask people to buy your stuff. Don't ask it like any of those things. Just don't, don't do it because you'll get deleted immediately. Don't put images that are branded right? It's going to be seen as promotion. So then what you do as the uh, group manager is you, you create a day when everybody gets to promote. So we like a post. So we say, Hey, on Saturdays, we're going to do a share Saturday post. Then everybody can tell us what, what it is that you're doing. Right. And if you really want to promote in this group, then use the tactic that you ask good questions and people will become curious in what you do. It's so much better to make money in your business, not by driving people information forward, but by creating curiosity so people ask, right? So those are two. And then the the other rules we have are just to be courteous and kind, that we reserve the right to kick you out at any given time, and that if you threaten anybody in any malicious kind of way, that you're out. And then you protect your group, protect it like crazy. Of course. I've been in you know, I'm in many Facebook groups and there's sometimes some that are just full of drama, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, how do you go about finding moderators and then keeping those moderators motivated to, you know, keep that group in, in check? Okay, well, and I love David. David had asked the question, which I, I think you need to have a couple hours where you have a VA or somebody do the unfun work. So the letting people in, the kicking people out, that kind of thing as much as possible, take that off of their plate because it's just like you and your business where if you're doing all the nitty gritty things, then you're not going to be happy, right? It makes it harder to do the fun things. Take the hard things off their plate so that they can have more fun, right? So that's the one thing I would say, take two hours a week, you know, a, or an hour a week or a couple, whatever it needs to be to have somebody moderate depending on how many people are coming in. As far as go, instead of just finding people to like asking people who wants to be a moderator, go to the people that are already engaging in the group and ask those people to level up. They're already in your group. They already trust what you're doing. Celebrate them. Tell them you absolutely adore them for what they're doing and ask them to contribute more and then ask them how you can help them. Right? So in, I mention my, my ambassadors, I mention them out into the world. When I have clients, I find out what they do. And then when I have clients that need what they need, I, I send them to them, right? Mm -hmm. So that idea is make sure you're being helpful just as much as they're being helpful. Awesome. Great, great answer. And so guys, we are coming up on time. So Dana, I think um, what we should do now is let these guys know how they can get a hold of you, how they can join your group, where they can find you all over the internet. So if you want to let them know, that would be great. Yes, 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 yes. So um, you can go to boss-mob.com. We'll get you to us. And I know um, Henrik was asking or asking a how-to product podcast. You know, 
the, the like super knowledge stuff, right? So if you go to our website, there is a free resource to show you how to engage in Facebook groups um, and to create that. So you can go go and get that if that's something that works for you. Um, if you want to come and go join our group, you just go to boss-mom.com forward slash uh, uh, Facebook and you can get to us. And then we have the boss mom podcast where I talk about all these things all the time. We actually have a boss dad podcast. I was too. just going to say, I think you have dad. a boss dad co- podcast as well. Awesome. And so I'll put all of these links in the replay email. It'll be sent out later today. We also have an empowerment giveaway. We'll be giving away Dana's book plus a whole bunch of other goodies. And I'll also have all the information about that in the replay email. So check your inboxes later. Dana, thank you so much for this. This has been so amazing. And people are so positive in the comments. They've really enjoyed this. And oh, that's so, a blast. Yay. Thank you again. I know you're busy. So go off and enjoy your weekend and social media marketing world. And uh, guys, we will see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.